tea. I do too. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't need any more honey though. No. I accidentally added a little too much. And then when I stirred the ginger up. Oh. So yes, have we have it. to do a ginger honey update. Ooh, it's so good and warming. Oh, but for right now, we are talking about what is, what's relevant, what's happening. And during this time of year, for us at least, we kind of just missed it, but we did get to experience it a little bit. There's something that magical happens, and it's probably one of the most beautiful trees that I think that we have growing in our area. Mm-hmm. You want me to say it? Go ahead. We have a little experimental arboretum, Blandy Farm, mm -hmm. Blandy, I can never say it right. It's the Blandy Experimental Farm. And they have a little grove of ginkgo trees. My husband and I went and they were in the process of turning green to yellow to gold. It's the most beautiful color change. And if you have an opportunity to be at least around a single ginkgo tree, not even a, but a grove of ginkgo. Oh, it was incredible. It just, the color is, it's phenomenal. It is, it's, it's, the color is so gold. It, it almost reminded me of goldenrod. Yeah. It's such an incredible tree and it offers so very much. And we're gonna talk about it because okay. it's relevant and you guys are probably starting to experience the ginkgo tree, the color change. I fell in love with ginkgo uh, a long time ago and one of the one of the things that I that I was fascinated by it is to find out that it is like one of the oldest living trees and one of the slowest growing trees. Right. And, I mean, I think it, I read it only grows about a foot a year ish. Right. So to understand that, and then that it is as far as history goes, and I don't know, I don't know very much at all about traditional Chinese medicine, but because we are studying herbs. A lot of times there's a reference to traditional Chinese medicine when we're working with a new a, a plant that might be new to us or we're learning more about. And um, there's evidence that dates 5,000 5, years. years ago, mm -hmm. which is hard for me to, you know, that's that's a concept that's difficult to grasp. But, but not really because in the same breath, Native Americans have been using a lot of plants mm -hmm. in this area. So... What do you do? And that's what we've experienced as herbalists here with our community is you use the plants that are growing around, around. you. Mm -hmm. So in, in Chinese medicine, that's what they had. And mm -hmm. that's what they've used. And how beautiful of a, of a story to even know that it, it's being cared for by Buddhist monks, you know, right. that are tending to these trees. And one day we'll have to go make a trip and see it. I did also read that one tree can live up to a thousand years. Yeah. That's that. I think that's the part that's that, that, mm -hmm. that is incredible. Now the leaves, this is what I think is really funny. So the leaves of the ginkgo tree is actually shaped, um, like your brain, like your brain. It's two equal parts side by side on one, on one stem. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the left and the right lobe of the brain and then connecting down to the central nervous and, system and which is exactly what the plant helps support in your body. I don't think that that was just made up. You know, no. how, how amazing of it is that there's this leaf, there's this tree that offers such support for your overall cognitive health and, and so supporting for memory and enhancing so we pulled out a couple of books and we'll just share with you. I have a uh, quarry pine chain and this is the Southeast Medicinal Plants book. He's just a great author, a great herbalist. I got a chance, we had a chance to meet him and talk to him at the American Herbalist. A lot Guild. of fun. <laughs> it was great. So what, what do you have? Which book, what so book did you grab? I grabbed, this was one that I picked up. It's by Phyllis A. Mulch. And if I pronounced her name 
improperly, I apologize, but I have one of her other books, which is the Prescription for Nutritional Healing, and this is Prescription for Herbal Healing, and she, she actually, I love the way she writes because it's very easy for me to read, and I've been, I've been familiar with her work now mm -hmm. for quite some years. She breaks this down and states that ginkgo is one of the most used treatment for memory loss and degenerative diseases for the brain and the central nervous system. It stimulates circulation and inhibits excessive blood clotting. It also aids treatment for a variety of conditions ranging from impotence to ringing in the ears. But here's where it gets interesting. Ginkgo increases the body's production of ATP, which is... The adenosine triphosphate. Triphosphate. And that is a compound that is the... That, and that is a compound that is the main source of energy at the cellular level. So that activity actually boosts the brain's metabolism for glucose and energy. And then it also increases its electrical activity. So then it's, you're... Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's nourishing, triggering. Yeah. And then increasing the flow of oxygen to the brain. So that alone, that activity itself keeps the brain from going into the atrophy, right. which is the downfall and the decline of the brain and its overall health. Right. And that's, you know, that's where Alzheimer's, that's where um, memory loss. Um, and I even read too that ginkgo is very, is also supportive with anxiety and depression. And if you think Makes about sense. it, if you're starting to lose the, your function of cognitive thought, you're going to be anxious and you're going to be depressed. Um, and so I like the fact that it offers other, other actions on how it's supportive as, as a plant, as a, as a leaf, whether it's in a tea or a, a tincture, we're or, not drinking it right now. No, it's because, nice. <laughs> it's nice. We want to go to sleep. Right. Because we look at the plant and we look at its actions and we figure out what would be best for us. So we focus on things that are going to be more more of an, a nervine sedative at night. But in the morning. But in the morning, yes. And ginkgo is actually one of our, our herbs that we have in our mindful morning tea blend that is great for mm -hmm. giving us the, the stamina and the mental focus to be able to handle all the umpteen million things lifey stuff that we have on our list. <laughs> the lifey stuff. Get to know ginkgo. Take time and learn about it. There are some precautions that, you know, some people that are on blood thinners. Right. You have to be careful about blood thinners. You also have to be careful if you are uh, going into surgery in the next couple of weeks. And also, if you are on any medication that is considered an MAO inhibitor, you probably don't want to add ginkgo into your, uh, to your regime. Back in August, we set up a ginkgo tincture. And a tincture is an alcohol extract of the plant matter that you are, are using. The ratio that we did on the ginkgo because this was a dried plant matter and then we also referenced the herbal the medicine makers, makers handbook. handbook great book great yep. book very good lots of information and what's really nice about this is that on page 155 there is a page where it lists all the references of the plant parts that we're using and the the adjusted weight to volume ratio yeah, so it gives you exactly what you need to do per plant because some some plant matter you don't exactly want to tincture in high alcohol some you want to do less some you want to do more so with ginkgo we use the leaves and the ratio that we went with was a one to five ratio by weight by weight so that's one part plant matter right to five parts alcohol which is your menstruum the ginkgo leaves at a one to five ratio it's it's recommended that we use a 55 to 70 percent alcohol mm -hmm. so if you use like a hundred so a little stronger than a hundred proof uh, right. vodka would be ideal um but you also have to you know take into consideration what can you get what is the availability right. so one of the things that we found that's been helpful mm -hmm. is a a pourable beaker with the spout yeah i like the spout or a mason jar works great and or then, a measuring cup yeah, yeah the measuring cup is actually really nice and then a, a stainless steel metal 
um, strainer. So what we're gonna do. Put this over here because we, we tend to make a mess. We do make a mess all the time. <laughs> Um, and then you can use a cheesecloth if you want. You can also uh, you can also filter it again if you would like with your with your funnel and strainer. But we're just going to. Or look at the green. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's really cool. So I like using gloves when I'm working with tinctures, especially if I've got to squeeze anything out. So I have these gloves that I've shared, I believe, in the past. These are compostable gloves. They're completely, I think they're made out of plant-based, they're plant-based gloves, but they're nice because at least I don't feel as wasteful. Mm -hmm. uh, and now all you do is you just squeeze it. If I was doing this on a larger scale, I think I would use my press because it's just the easier. You load it up and it does all the squeezing for you. But the trick is you just try to get as much well, as much as you can out of it. That's beautiful. It's very rich and green. Then you're going to take your amber colored bottle and if you have a unbleached um, coffee filter that tends to work fine. This is kind of nice where you have multiple hands. So when you start it there we go. And it's filtering it again just in case if I accidentally lost any plant matter. It's not necessarily going to hurt it, but Look it at just color. keeps it nice and clean. I've got to get you guys closer for this. Yeah. So this process kind of takes a little bit longer, um, but in the meantime, what you can do is we can start working on the label. Now, all of our amber colored bottles, and I will add that a lot of people ask why, why amber colored bottles? Because we want to protect the plant matter as much as possible from um, being broken down by the sun. We want the best quality that we could potentially have from, from our tinctures. So if we were to tincture it and store it in a clear bottle and have up here, yes, we keep it kind of dark in here, but there's that chance. So we just figured keep it universal, store it in amber colored bottles. It's a great idea to just kind of keep them in the dark to preserve them for as long as possible. I mean, you gotta think you're doing all the work from foraging to shaking of the tinctures on a daily basis. It's a lot. You want to make sure that what you're making is going to be of, of the best of its of its capability. Yeah, of the best quality that you can offer it. Now we do label our bottles. Um, I have my little fancy label maker. Which oh, I'll go get it. It's not that fancy, but I absolutely love the way it looks. We've tried around and played around with multiple different label makers. I think this is probably my favorite. It's just simple and it's it's just embossed and it's. I think it looks really cool. Um, but we also do put another label on the back. The back has a little bit more information. So the back label, what we put on here is the name of the herb, the date that it's pressed, the ratio, and what percent of alcohol was used to be able to make this tincture. And we've just put this down here on the bottom. Yeah, and then on the front is the one where I will put the rest of the information. I just want to make sure that I, I'm spelling it right. I forgot the G on this label. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do over. So, Take number 42. 42. I need one of those like action. I need that. So I will say that I understand B -I -L -O -B -A. why OBA why people will use like the type up one because this is kind of tedious but i don't i don't mind it because it looks so cool look at it that is yeah but it doesn't have spell check no it doesn't <laughs> ginkgo did i spell that right ginkgo biloba i did g-i-n-g okay so then g-i-n-g-k-o G I N K G O. <laughs> no, no, 
do you guys, oh gosh. What the heck, why did we misspell it again? You. <laughs> Y'all. G. I. N. K. <laughs> so I did spell it right the first time. And I threw it away. Oh my gosh. I was G -I -N, like. G-I-N. Yeah. K. Yeah. Gink. You go. messed me up. Because I had it. I spelled it right. All right, guys. Take three. I'm telling you, it's the tea. We made sleepy time. Like, we made, like, blissful night tea and added a bunch of stuff to it that we don't even know what we put in. I'm just no. kidding. We know what we put in it. It was... No, we are tired. It's been... That time change really has affected us and I think our brain... So, we My should brain have probably... is not functioning right here. now. Jesus. Okay. You did it right. One, two, one, three, this three, is two. right. Right here. All right. We're going to strap this bad boy on here. Just like that. And then today's date, right? Today's date. And we are all poured out. That is happy. Look at that. That is beautiful. We've got our Ginkgo by Loba and my labels. This is the other thing I do like about this label. If I have to adjust it, it's really not that hard and it sticks right back on. We'll put that one up there with, with the Ginkgo. Just had to check that label, oh make sure I wrote it right. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I think in the next video that um, we were talking about wanting to share with you guys, because we've received a lot of questions about the apothecary and items that we have in here. Oh, yeah. So one of the next things that we're going to do is probably go ahead and do an apothecary tour uh, with the items that we use on a normal basis. I think what I'm probably going to do is take all of the items that we, uh, that we use and put them on our Amazon store for you guys to be able to see as well so that it is all categorized and it's there. Oh, that's uh, a great and idea. And it'll be its own mm -hmm. section because we have a lot of people that ask about our teapot. Um, we have a lot of people that ask about our books, the amber bottles. And so that I think is going to be coming up um, in one of the next videos. Maybe we can work on that tomorrow. Maybe. I think that's the plan, but I'm not. Gonna miss Spell Ginkgo? No, I'm not gonna drink knock out tea and then knock try to do a right. video well and then in all honesty like i said we did have the time change and it i'm really, all out of whack i am out of whack <laughs> so they make a plan for that well maybe i do need ginkgo to like <laughs> tomorrow fix. morning oh my gosh that's what i'm doing tomorrow morning yeah um but we really appreciate you guys coming along with us and just learning about this beautiful this beautiful tree and the history of it and how to spell it yes <laughs> And how to spell it. I think I spelt it right the first time. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, this has been, uh, I hope that if you, if you use Ginkgo, maybe you got to learn something today that you didn't know otherwise. And, and if not, before you decide to use it, that you do your research mm -hmm. on it and make sure that it's compatible with, with you and your system. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And learn something old. Bye, guys. Bye.